Boy, oh boy, do I have a good video for you today, guys. In today's video, I'm going to show you two absolutely crazy use cases for the Roo code plus Sonnet thing that I've been talking about recently, the browser use MCP. I'm telling you right now, forget Manus. Manus is overhyped. I honestly, truly believe that. Julian Goldie also agrees. Julian has had access to Manus for a long time, and he's obviously quite excited about Roo code plus Sonnet and has completely stopped making videos about Manus, probably just because this is much better. Now, these are completely autonomous, flexible, and logged into your data, okay? And I'll show you the exact setup process for this. Everything will be in the description of the video. Let's get into it. So, basically, there are two things you need to do, first of all. There, there's kind of two commands, right? Um, so there's this one here, right? And then there's this one here. The second one, the first one just starts a server. We can just focus on the second one here. So this is profile eight, which is the profile I actually want to be using, right? So if I just close this, right, and then run this, you'll see that this opens up Google Chrome, as you can see right here, right? And then we go to Visual Studio Code here. We go to Roo Code, right? Just download Roo Code. It's very, very easy. Go down to Browser Use, Enable Browser Use. I'm gonna use Small Desktop, 100% quality and then put localhost 922 right here. And then just so that everyone knows how this actually works, if I just say to this, um, open up browser use and go to Google search console for the website twomen.it. Sorry if you can hear the piano guys, my fiance is just um, playing the piano, helps her relax and I'm not gonna tell her to stop, so. Okay, so what's happened here is this has actually opened it in the wrong Google Chrome thing. Okay, so I'm glad this actually happened uh, because this is something that you need to know how to fix anyway, right? So you actually just need to run task kill IM Chrome like that, right? That stops all Chrome processes. And then I'm gonna start it again with profile eight, right? And then I'm just gonna say exactly the same message. So uh, we'll just start a new chat here, open up a new Chrome and go to search console. So now what will happen is it will do exactly the same thing, but this time it's on the correct search console, right? You can see it at the top here. Now, a couple of things I wanna mention is it can't click very well on Google search console. I'm not sure what the problem is. I hope eventually it gets fixed. But if I say, for example, um, if I say, I hate that you can't pause as well. I hate that the option is cancel. I really dislike that. So you, it, it clicked this time, it did actually work, but a lot of times it doesn't work, okay? So it seems to just be going off on one, that's fine. I wanna show you these two use cases right here, right now. Okay, so the first use case is this one here, right? Watch the sitemap, twomen.it slash sitemap.xml. Every one hour exactly, refresh the blog sitemap, which can be found on their main sitemap, and tell me if any new blogs are created. When a new blog is found, post it to a CSV. Okay, so you can see here, it opens it up, right? And then it sees, okay, so this is the blog one right here. So it opens up the blog link. It should just go directly to it. It shouldn't try and click. Why would you try and click? It's an XML. Obviously, it's not going to work. So now it goes to blogs, right? And then what I wanted to do is I wanted to spy on my competitors, right? So even when I'm sleeping, that doesn't seem to work. Even when I'm sleeping, right, we can um, we can keep an eye on this. So what it's done now is it's got a full idea of how this sitemap is set out. And now what it's going to do is it's just going to create an HTML file. Okay, so now this has created an entire system for me to monitor one of my competitors. In this case, I'm just saying that Two Men is a competitor. If I went and added a new blog to Two Men right now and then press check now, I'm assuming it would pop up with one new blog found. So this is a way to scout your competitors, but it's also a way to code in context, right? I, so there are kind of two ways of doing this. There's the crawl for AI, Gina, um, you know, perplexity, the scraper website um, as if it were a robot, reads everything kind of all jumbled up and then tries its best to regurgitate that information into something suitable, right? So like it says, okay, so this is how to implement the Anthropic API, whatever. Let's say you go to Perplexity API and say, give me the most up-to-date Perplexity API 
or uh, Anthropic API um, documentation, right? That's what it does. It, it does exactly this process. What I personally think is better is programming where Claude first sees, not sees as code, but sees as if it were a human, what it's supposed to be coding, right? So whether that's um, seeing this sitemap to understand that it's an XML sitemap, whatever, um, this is quite an easy example, or if it's documentation, right? It just means that the, the success chance is gonna go up because Claude can actually see with eyes, right, the information that you're trying to show it, okay? So that's why, that's use case number one, is like coding, but with context from the internet, but real human context, not like, you know, bunched up or mushed up documentation, okay? And then the second use case, which is arguably much more useful, right? This is an actual use case for the agency. One of the first things we do when we get a new client is competitor research. And one of those is finding by competitors. This is not as easy as it sounds, okay? So obviously you can just go to Ahrefs and just do this uh, very, very quickly. But even so, we, we do this without Ahrefs. The way that we actually do it is we take like 10 to 20 ranking keywords. We search them on whatever countries Google was supposed to be searching them on. We look our, at the first kind of 10 results. And then if someone is appearing on the same SERP five plus times, let's say, then they become a competitor and they go into the CSV for competitors, right? So we pay, we currently pay someone to do this, okay? Probably costs, I don't know, let's just say 50 to $200 for each client at the beginning of every single uh, campaign, okay? Uh, just so you know, we are an agency. If you wanna work with us, there'll be a link to talk to us in the description of this video. Uh, we're called Craft Agency, and yeah, like I said, this is one of the first things we actually do. So I'm gonna show you this entire process, right? So what I want is 10 search competitors to two men dot it. So we'll press enter here. This doesn't actually matter as much that it's logged in. Um, that's not logged in, sorry, it's just gonna use a random one. So the first thing I've set it to do, and this is really cool, okay, this is something else that I'll probably make a video about very soon, is that Rue has this system here, right, where it asks clarification questions, but you can program these clarification questions, okay? So what does that actually mean? It means that we can do the same thing as the topical authority generator, right? My topical authority generator, which is one of the most famous topical authority generators in the entire world. Uh, this is not even the right one, but that's fine. Um, and what this actually does is it has step one, step two, step three, step four programmed into it. We can do this, it's a custom GPT, right? We can actually do the same thing with Klein where we create these workflows, right? Um, and we effectively just replace small parts of our businesses with AI, right? So what does this look like? Uh, I need to give it some keywords. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pull a, here's one I did earlier real quick, if I can, unless I closed it, it looks like I closed it. So I'll show you guys this entire process just because it looks like I have closed it. So we'll go to two men here and then we'll go to chat GPT, which will make sense in a minute. Uh, so I need uh, href, so add zh hands and any other languages you can think of uh, to here. Okay, so we'll just add all of these different languages. Uh, the point behind this um, is to only get English keywords, right? So I'll triple click here. And we should just be able to add filter, query, um, custom regex, doesn't match regex, and then put it here. That should work. This should just be English. Nope, there's another language there. Uh, so we need to remove these, whatever these two languages are. That looks like Spanish, which I'm surprised wouldn't be included here. It is. Oh, I think I put query. Yeah, that, that, that's better. I put query instead of page. So we now have, if I press uh, impressions, right? These are our top 
uh, 10 keywords, okay? So we'll just drag these like that. Very, very simple. Control C to copy. And then we go over here and we just paste, right? And then that gives the top keywords to the system. And then it'll start doing the next part of the system, which is to search for Premiata on Google, uh, make a list of in, in inside its memory of all of the websites that come up organically. And then it will do the next thing where it searches Kiton, right? And if you actually just go on Google and type in Premiata and scroll down, you'll see probably um, Farfetch, yeah. And then if we do the same thing with Kiton, you'll also see Farfetch, I would guess. Yeah, Farfetch right here. So that would hopefully then come up as a uh, competitor, right? Okay, just one quick thing to mention while it's doing this, right? I'm, I'm probably going to end the video pretty soon because I, I think these are really, really good use cases. But I cannot keep stressing this enough. Iteration prompting is key, right? So I need to say to it, because it hasn't really got the message, check the first page only. And a competitor is a website that appears on the SERP uh, on, on three different SERPs. So these are actually the competitors it came up with. Let's just read through these and I'll tell you how good they are. Farfetch, definitely. Uh, Luis, what? I've never even heard of this website. LuisAviaRoma.com They sell kit on? I don't know. That looks like it's a competitor. This is definitely a competitor. It's someone that my old boss sells to. Yes, yes. This is IE, so fine. Uh, I didn't set it to. Um, I didn't set it to the US. This has done a very, very good job. This has done as good a job as someone who we pay, you know, fifty to two hundred dollars. I don't know the exact pricing. I'm just guessing. Uh, I would say it probably takes four to six hours per client of work time. Um, you know, just bear in mind we're in a in an agency, so that's just how things work. Let's say we're paying. I don't know, ten an hour. So it could be up to $60 an hour. This cost 0 0.4. How damn. Okay, I'm going to leave the video there, guys. This is completely crazy. Find everything you need in the description of this video. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend. And I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.